bogey. Yeah, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change. We can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. We've been through worse than this before. Stay strong. Stay with me. I need time and no traitors. This is all going to plan. We rob Uncle Sam and we leave. <laughs> the poetry of it all. What about the women? You sound like Jose. I miss him. I killed Combs' brother a long time ago. Then he killed a woman I loved dear. You keep killing folk, Dutch. I am just trying to make sure that some of us survive, Arthur. They will not crush us. Maybe time for folks like us has passed. I ain't got a final plan yet. Arthur, I ain't got it. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see? Then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Our time has passed. Yeah. Wow, what an intro. And you can find that video link in the description. Guys, welcome back to the show. Dan here, as always another amazing guest today we have Dutch Vandalin aka Benjamin Davis how you're doing how you feeling who have we got in here today what lovely people Who cares? Dutch himself. R.I. Play. Tui. AJF Sonic. Legend Arthur Morgan. Vi Fox. Lol. Love Preet. Warrior. Peter Finley. Lieutenant. Streets. We're all rolling in. You feeling good? It's going to be a great stream. Now, guys, I've got a favor. I'd love to get Rob on the show. I've sent a tweet out to him, as you can see here. I'd love you to go over there. Say you'd love to see him come on. Give the like. Give the tweet a like. Share it around. Let's try and get him on. John Marston. That'd be great, wouldn't it? So if you do have Twitter, go over there now. That'd be fantastic, guys. If you could do that favor for me, get his attention so we can get him on here for you guys to, and for all of us to enjoy ourselves. Sounds pretty good to me. Thank you, Stefan, Stephen. You reckon IG? Yeah. I'll give it a crack. He does construction work, does he? There you go. Yeah, just leave a comment and just say, um, just say you'd love to see him on because the more people that like it and comment and, and do that, uh, the more chance. All right, here we go, guys. Today's guest is here. Ben Davis is going to be a blast, guys. I hope you enjoy it.
Ben, can you hear me? Ben, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can indeed. How are you, mate? Are I can't you? see you, by the way. I'm working on that. Hey. I think I it. How are you doing? Ben, I'm doing well, mate. How are you? I'm well. Let me just go. Get it so I don't have to look at my own face. Are we on? Are we live? <laughs> we are live right now. People are people are flocking in. How is uh, how's your day been so far? Oh, no complaints. I guess you know, li loving life in Los Angeles in the midst of well, in the hopefully the ending days of a pandemic. Oh, we hope so, don't we? Oh yeah. No, knock wood. How was how was your twenty twenty? Because it was a weird year for everyone. It was, yeah, it was a weird year. Um, there's no denying it. I, I, I think I am, as a, as a gigging actor, I think I'm a little bit more, my life has sort of been centered around downtime and, you know, loss of work. So I think I had a leg up in that regard. And then the other thing has been, um, you know, because of this tech that we have now, I've been able to continue auditioning and, and, I, I have a class I teach and we manage somehow to move that into a Zoom space. And that actually had, you know, some good things and some bad things. But, you know, all told, I think uh, I think I've been very fortunate and blessed throughout this. And I, I, I know a lot of people who've had it uh, much, much worse. And I, I feel terribly for them. How, how have you been holding up? Yeah, we here in Australia, we we were in lockdown for the good part of last year. I tell you, we were. I was in this room twenty four seven. It felt, but we're out now. We're we're out, so we can. Um, and we don't even have to wear masks now. So we're. But I mean, the the people in Australia compared to compared to America, a little bit different, I think, in size. <laughs> you, you haven't politicized mask wearing or anything like that, or what? Do you, uh, how do you mean? No. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think, I think the amount of people in Australia equals the amount just in LA from memory. <laughs> oh, I, that's, that's, that sounds, that sounds quite plausible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been to Australia, but I've got a great friend. Oh, you haven't? Friend. No, no, I haven't yet. There was some plan before COVID that maybe I was going to get over there for something, but for a Comic Con or I, something, something like that. But I know there's yeah. a wonderful, in, in Melbourne, there's a wonderful, uh, a school called the 16th street theater. And I know some folks over there and uh, I know yes. a lot of folks from Sydney, you, you, uh, more than a few Australians have come to Los Angeles in case yeah. you didn't know that. A so couple, I, I, a couple lately. <laughs> I, there's a wonderful organization called Australians in film that, that I uh, uh, know. And, and, uh, and I did a film called Belco experiment and the director was Greg oh, McClain. Wow. Yeah. And, and Greg is an Aussie, and he did. You guys know him because of Wolf's Wolf's Creek, I think. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. But that's a uh, classic down here. Oh yeah, well that that lead actor is tremendous. I forget his name, but uh, yeah. Anyway, well, I hope to make it to Australia. Yeah, hundred percent. People people are loving the beard, by the way, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did, how, uh, how long did that take? This is it's. I've never had one this long. Um, no, well, usually, you know, when I'm not, the beard has sort of been on lately, but I've, I've go with it without it, you know, as an actor, you tend to change your look. There was years when I was doing Red Dead, whenever we'd go in because of the way they'd get the facial capture, I had to shave this thing off uh, every of couple of months. And I, and, you know, I couldn't tell people that I was working, but I could tell people that if I was clean shaven, I was making money. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is the longest it's been. And it's really, it's a lot. I like it, except soup is a challenge. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, are you, you're growing a beard over there. This, like. this is, this is tame. I had one like you a few weeks ago. It was, I called it oh. the COVID beard. Yeah, I think that's what this is. But I mean, this you could you could probably braid this. I think. Uh, no, thank you for coming on, man. Everyone's very excited to see you. Um, talk to us about this iconic role. I mean, it all started how long ago? Twelve years ago. I guess it'd be two thousand eight. Um, so yeah, thirteen years ago. Yeah, I got I got sent in. Um, I got sent in for an untitled cowboy project and uh isn't that crazy uh, yeah well it was also it was what was crazy about it was 
um, the way Rockstar does it, and I think they still do it this way, they reach out, a, a lot of actors have um, uh, an agent who handles their commercial work and another agent that handles their, uh, what you call theatrical work or legit work, depending on which coast you're on in, in the US. And uh, this came through my commercial agency initially. Oh, okay. Um, which also, um, anyway, too much, it's too deep. No, I, I love this. I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Personally. Yeah. Well, then the the fun thing is, is you know, I live in Hollywood, and you may you may hear some of Hollywood going by throughout our conversation. But uh, uh, <laughs> the, the drive to Santa Monica from Hollywood at a certain hour a day uh, is it takes about an hour round trip to go uh, to do a ten mile round trip, so an hour in both directions. It's not anything, and for whatever reason, these auditions are at you know, 4.45 at the peak of rush hour. And I, I got... I was going to say, it's not always like that, is it? No, but yeah. but a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's changed now. I mean, one, one great thing oh, about yeah. COVID in Los Angeles is the traffic has gotten, has improved somewhat. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of begrudgingly went to this audition and, uh, and it was a motley crew in the waiting room. I mean, there were people dressed up I've never been one for wearing a costume to an audition to begin with, but there were people dressed up with Native American headdresses and cap guns and six shooters. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? What, what am I in the middle of? And they gave me some interesting copy, um, which actually ended up, I think, in game. I, I think it was, uh, yeah, not, not, not my work, but I think the copy was, it's been it, uh, Bonnie McFarlane's father. Oh, okay. Had had a monologue in the first game about burying more sons than he raised, and that was that was the monologue. And I read, I read, I read the 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 piece, and I had done a, a role which had this sort of cowboy guy voice, which not too different from mine, but was um, sort of in the ballpark, you know that that guy and. Um, I read it and they said, uh, we're going to have something for you, which was nice. You don't often hear that in the room. And then, uh, mm. and then, uh, I waited and, uh, didn't hear anything, I think through Christmas. And then just, you get a call one day and I showed up, um, and was my first time ever putting on a motion capture suit, my first time ever putting on. You know, the rigs we had for Red Dead Redemption 2 were much better, but we had this helmet cam uh, to get your face. And then the weirdest of all things, Dan, was I walk into this gig and there is uh, Rob Weedoff, who I hadn't seen in a few years, but we knew each other from working together at a place called Sky Bar, where we'd both been security as a, oh, you, as a, you know, a survival wow. job. That's I was crazy. like, Rob, what are you doing here? And why are you wearing a motion capture suit? You know, it was just a very, very bizarre uh, experience, and and a great one because that's I got to meet you know the folks at Rockstar are, are tremendous, and our director is a fellow named Rod Edge, who is about as uh, significant an artistic collaborator as I've had in my whole career, and, and uh, so all of those relationships began way back then, uh, and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity and for a chance to, you know, explore this guy so deeply and thoroughly through so many years. It's just, it's, it's, I still am humbled by the, uh, the opportunity. You, you worked with him before though, didn't you on San Andres for a couple of lines? Yeah, but that was, I mean, that was different experience entirely because yeah. you're, you're so far down the totem pole. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, you. So I did on San Andreas. Although this is this is kind of a funny story. On San Andreas, I uh, did. Pedestrian? I went in. I'm a pedestrian, but I'm also a cop. Oh, yeah. And so it was one session. It was maybe four hours of just sitting around and doing goofy voices, and you know, it's all this goofy lines about the you know the quality of weed in San Francisco or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But then. You know, the game came out and I would have buddies come over and I'd play the game trying to find my pedestrian 
And then, <laughs> and then one time I got my pedestrian in a fight with my cop, and I was like, "Holy cow!" I thought that was like the pinnacle That's of my great. intersection with popular culture was right there. Was, oh my god, I'm insane! But that was uh... they they didn't really, you know. And I'd also after I'd done the first Red Dead, I did yeah. a small thing on L.A. Noir. Yeah, but but they didn't. It wasn't one didn't come from the other. They were just separate. Aud- so I'd gone from being the guy, you know, they knew who I was on Red Dead. But then I come in on L.A. Noir. Nobody knew who I was. And so uh, it was it was clear. And it was a different director on L.A. Noir. That was a very interesting technology. to. Look yeah, that at. was mocap, wasn't it? On the face. L.A. Noir. Well, all all of the. Red Dead, it's all facial capture. I, I'm not allowed to say too much, I don't think, about how. But um, what they did on L.A. And what's great about that in the Red Dead process is that it's just, it's like doing theater. So I'm there, Rob's over there, Alex McKenna's over there, and we're just performing, you know, the scene. And it's just, it's like, it's like you're doing theater. People continually, I think, habitually maybe call it voice acting, but it, makes no you have you don't understand if it was voice acting if we could have done it in that's that's what roger was saying the other week is it's completely different the two well it was i roger i mean i think i worked four and a half five years on it i think i did probably a hundred plus days of production that's not a voice acting gig that's a that's a acting gig Mm. um but the la noir was this different and i think there's documentaries that show you about it but what they were doing with that was they were getting their face like you're like you go in you go in they give you a haircut they'd have to plaster your hair down because light couldn't get through it for the tech to work and then they put you in a room and the dialogue is just going in front of you and then that head gets rendered and then they put that head on another uh on a mocap actor that's done the body so you're not even half of those oh. actors aren't doing the body so they're just really? doing the head yeah it's it didn't it was it's very cool to look at but it was not i don't i don't, I don't think it was quite fully baked in terms of no. the uh the, the process because the thing about the performance capture stuff is you just get it just feels different. You can tell there the, the scenes where we're all together have this uh, energy that chemistry. is. Oh yeah. Well, and cause we, man, we were, we were in it together. Uh, yeah. And we, we became and remain in many ways uh, a gang. I mean, they're, we're, we're veterans of, of the same, uh, uh, not quite a war, but we're, we're veterans for sure. Did you did you think there was going to be a sequel when you once you wrapped the first game? You were you were hoping, I know. I'm sure you were hoping, but did you think that they would they would come back to it? Cuz you know, your character didn't have a great end, you know. The ending, you know, was pretty you know. Uh, it, it just to, I was hoping on the first game that Dutch was as big a part of the overall story as I thought he might be to, to let you understand. I mean, I did not, I did not fully understand um, the nature of the story that we were telling until I played Red Dead Redemption. So while we were working on it, because of the secrecy that's necessitated by the, just the way this industry, the, the gaming industry in particular functions. Um, There's Hollywood. Uh, yeah, they, well, <laughs> this way. I mean, hopefully there won't be a fire, but if there's a fire, we're going to have to take a minute. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, so it was when I was playing the game, the first time I played the game, it was I was like playing to find out who I was, like to get to the, so it was very, very interesting that I'm like hunting myself for the 20 hours or so it takes to get to it. But then when we got to the end and I was like, okay, yeah. I th- I was who I thought I was. That yeah, I wanted I wanted I wanted a prequel very much, but I didn't. There was no way. There was no way to know, and uh, so you just can carry on. You know, what's and, the next gig? 
And to think that you actually probably had more work in the second, yeah, than the first. Dan, I did more work than anyone. In... <laughs> more than no, Roger, no, what? Nearly. Uh, no, oh no, 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 no. Roger, <laughs> you was were a... up there. They did... right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not even Roger. They. It was... I don't think there was twenty days in five years that Roger wasn't on the set. He was every day. Yeah. Um, no one, as a matter of fact, I think at one point, and I don't know if this record still holds, but I think at one point, Roger was the, the most performance captured actor, the most hours of performance capture. No way. That's um, insane. For one guy. So, no, I had it. I had it. I, I was busy, but Rob and Roger, uh, you know, I, I'm probably third place in terms yeah. of, uh, days on set behind those cowboys uh <laughs> legend both um but i will tell you in the first the first sort of three week session of what became a five-year process i think by the end of the second week i had done more work on dutch than i'd done in the entire first game wow Ma matthias says benjamin your work is brilliant our band Pongo ah. insists on a shout out. I wanted to ask if you could take on any role in any medium for any character, past or present. Who would you tackle? I, I, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a disappointing answer because <laughs> you you know to 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 endure in this business, you 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 take what comes and you, yeah. and you learn how to, you learn how to embrace the journey more than like the target of, I want that thing or I want that thing. Um, when I'm asked what, you know, what's what part am I most looking forward to? The pithy answer is the next one. Right. But um, it is true in uh, a lot of respects, isn't it? Well, cause it's also, you know, I was, I did a podcast with the, the, uh, a friend and a former student of mine a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about uh, Sweeney Todd, which is a role I don't quite have the chops to play just in terms of the singing. Um, but that's a role that was very motivating to me. And in a lot of ways, Dutch crosses off a lot of the boxes that that role sort of put in me. Um, but yeah, I, you know, you, the fun is getting into the character. So anticipating it, is is uh i don't know the use in it but i mean for a long time when i was younger i think i might have aged out on I, I really wanted to play brutus and julius caesar and i really wanted to play lenny in of mice and men and got close on that a couple of times but it never happened mm, um yeah. which is you know that's just lenny's a if you're six foot six you're 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 gonna get a crack at lenny hopefully at one <laughs> yeah. point or another in your career um but that's a good question. And who wanted a shout out? Uh, their bad Pongo, I think it was. Bad Pongo. Okay. Well, I salute you, bad Pongo. <laughs> um, Mr. Marsden. Marsden says, love you and the cast work. Easily my favorite game ever, along with the first game. I wanted to know your thoughts on the Fix John Marsden petition. I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't know what that is either. No. <laughs> You're going to have to enlighten us on that. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, mate, like what, when you finish on Red Dead 2, how do you, how does it all feel? Cause so many days are put into this and you don't know if there's ever going to be another chance to play the character. So how does that, like, how does that feel on the last day? Emotional? Well, that doesn't, I mean, I don't know if that begins to cover it. Yeah. You know, there's a thing, there's a thing that, uh, well, first of all, we didn't really know what the last day was. Um, oh, really? Well, it would be like, today's the last day, and that was it, and then we'd get called back. Oh, no, there's a couple more things, and then today's the last day. <laughs> so one of them ended up being the last day. I think I remember which one was the last day. Um, but then it's you're still stuck behind this non-disclosure agreement. And, uh, oh, yeah. And so you're, and then you're kind of cut off now from all these people that you've been spending all these days with, and this with this sort of common purpose. But you know, you do. If you if you go 
through a five week rehearsal process for a, a two month run of a play, you get to the end of that play and you go through a bit of a, de a depression, an adjustment to you know the absence of there's there's a loss that goes along with um, any sort of en any ensemble projects. enterprise. Yeah. Um, so you figure for, yeah, yeah, I wasn't right in the head on the other side of it, to be honest. I mean, really? it took, it yeah. took, well, it just took a while to, like, I go into audition for things and I sort of at first felt like, do, I don't know how to do anything but Dutch. Like, am I stuck, am yeah, I like yeah, stuck yeah. in this role? Um, that fades with time, but. I still miss it every, I mean, it, it, it was, it, it was, it was hard work, but it was, I, there wasn't a, a, a good, I didn't have a bad day on that job. That's something not a lot of people can say about their work. So that's awesome. I am, um, I got another question here from Dennis. Ben, what do you think of the theory that Dutch got brain damage from the trolley crash after the station robbery in St. Denis? Love your work from Dennis. De Dennis, thank you very much. It's nice to hear. And by the way, everyone's, everyone's saying love your work. That's just oh, one, of, well, one of hundreds. <laughs> well, that's that means a lot. That, Otherwise, I, mean, that... I, I, I wouldn't be able to let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. To, uh, it's, it, it means a great deal. That's it. It's the first thing I'd say about this is my I played the guy, right? So I had I had I have some input, but he's not mine. He's 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 rock stars. And beyond that, more importantly, he's the fans. Um, mm. So I would never want an answer that I gave about my opinion about anything with Dutch to supersede somebody we can disagree about the guy and i think that that's great i think that that's appropriate um so uh but i don't want anybody to think that because i believe this is true of dutch what they believe of dutch is not true it's 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 art right yeah i know what you mean but so so that question has come up about the trolley i i for one don't subscribe to it but i also know that there are folks that have have been transformed by head trauma um, that identify with that version of the story. The, the, the getting knocked in the head to me is the reason why Dutch wasn't that useful getting out of that mission, you know, because he's in just in the back of that cart convalescing. Um, my instinct is, well, first of all, is that whatever's going wrong with Dutch is already going wrong before the game begins because mm -hmm. the gang is talking at the beginning of the game about what was that with Dutch shooting the woman in, in on the ferry, Heidi McCourt, which we don't ever see, but that was out of character for the man. So um, I, in the playing of it and in the, in the, in the shaping of it, what became clear to me was how important and spoilers, I guess ought to be said, but how important Hosea was to Dutch because Hosea was the only person that Dutch would let that Dutch would allow to contradict him or to talk him off of a ledge. Um, yeah, uh, in fact, neither John nor Arthur were mm. capable of talking Dutch off of those two ledges. But um, but Jose quite literally. So when Jose is gone, he's gone because of a mission that is the first time we see Dutch. Not quite sure. There's that scene before they go on the mission where Jose has to talk him into it. Dutch isn't convinced that the bank robber is the right idea, so he trusts Jose. He ends up losing Jose. He ends up losing John. Um, and now he's got around him. Uh, now he's suspicious of everybody. Who, who screwed up this? Did John do it? Did, 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 did Arthur do it? Mm -hmm. And so who, and so who is the one person who has never doubted him, who has always um, honored him, 
who has always had, quote unquote, his bat, it's Micah. And from the outside looking in, it it seems like, you know, why the hell would you trust this guy? <laughs> but yeah, right. from the from the inside, um, I understood I understood very well why Dutch was was drawn to um, Micah's Micah played him, you know. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Great it. Great answer there. Uh, Drive by commentator says stunning portrayal of Dutch Ben. There's a common trait I see in him of many antagonists. They're more devoted to concepts and ideas than people around them. That's an interesting thought. Mm. You know, antagonists don't don't consider themselves an antagonist. Antagonists consider themselves heroes. I was going to say, uh, do you consider him a bad guy? You know, there's that great movie, uh, Road to Perdition, where Paul Newman has the line uh, to, to Tom Hanks, there are only murderers in this room. I mean, is he a bad yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah. He's, he kills people. He's a bad guy. But in the context, is, yeah. Is he an unprincipled man, I think, is the question. And I believe that he is not. I believe mm. that he is motivated by... A, he is. He has at least in his um, worldview, he has a cause. And not just a cause, he has a responsibility. Um, he feels quite responsible for these folks. And so it seems like he's betraying people left and right, but in his, again, my how I, how I played it, um, but in yeah. his mind, when, when you're cutting loose gang members, you're doing it for the betterment of the gang. And that's what he's, he's still imagining he's doing it for the, the whole gang is falling apart and it's because they're all traitors, right? Everybody's lost, but me is <laughs> sort of Dutch's uh, mm. where he is. And I don't think he quite understands until it's too late to, to do anything about it. He's a very complex character, which is always great for you know for yourself to to dive into for any actor to get a character oh. like that it's just a dream isn't it it's 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 crazy i mean it's one in one in a million that that it lined up that i got to and the fact that i you know i love the guy so so much and playing him is a lot of fun can i can i ask you I, roger mentioned that you actually played through the games that's right isn't it oh yeah yeah no, yeah I, yeah, I got a hundred percent. I got a hundred percent on, uh, oh, on, on Red Dead, tons of times. Because <laughs> oh, I played. Yeah. Whenever we had downtime on the second game, I would, I would, you want to stay steeped in the the role as best as you could. And one of the ways I would do that was I'd play through Red Dead, watch That's a awesome. ton of westerns, but just try to stay on game. Um, but yeah, second game. Yeah, I got a hundred percent on that. Are you kidding? I spent five years working on that thing. You think I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna miss any of it? Uh, That's awesome. And it's it's also it's like, there's when you've done it, you're like, oh, that guy pissing over in the corner. That was me. I remember that. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I might have that one. Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, have you have you ever thought about streaming it or anything like that, or you don't think you will? I, you know. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm Gen X, man. I, 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 <laughs> I start, how. I started, I started in, <laughs> in an analog world and now I'm in a digital world and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting the hang of Instagram. Um, <laughs> hey, you're better but, than Roger. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> no, t no, well, I, not better in terms of, uh, he's got, I think, 250, oh. who knows? It's crazy how the access to, to folks that you have but yeah. in terms of in terms of you know i'll go on red Dead online yeah and and then get griefed for a little while and i'll hop off but but the idea of twitching you know even the verb of twitching i, I don't i don't know if it's i don't know if it's for me um but i yeah. love i i do love that people are still so uh invested in in that project i mean it's really really remarkable 
Hey Ben, uh, this is from KRB. Hey Ben, what do you think was your best performed scene throughout Red Dead One and Two? And could I get a quick? I had a goddamn plan, Kai. Kai. Okay, I had a goddamn plan, Kai. Boy, can you tell how much I love saying that? <laughs> um, uh, uh, Not the first time you've like, been asked that. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's like you know, go play the game. It's 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 better there <laughs> than I can do it now. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. You know, again, this is a disappointing answer, but I I, I wouldn't rank you don't my rank perfor- my, yeah. my perform. There are there were days that were there's a lot of unforgettable days on that Um, walking up to Braithwaite Manor which again if you think about it as voice acting you don't understand how long that took for us to do we had we walked all that that's us walking in that scene and that took days but that energy is because we're all there Mm. um and another one that was, uh, and I've said this ad infinitum, but but man, uh, Angelo Bronte on the skiff, that was a hell of a day. That was a hell of a day. And then, and again, that's we're all on that skiff. And then poor Jim Peary, it, it, you know, at a certain point he turns into a model or a dummy so that I can get pretty hard on him. But, but that was, that was fun to do. Training. And that was one of the, pardon? Draining energy or what? That's just, the, it goes with the territory. Mm. Um, no, but to me, it's, it's always, it's, it's more, you know, you don't, you can't get precious with this stuff because it's at the end of the day, whether you're on film or in performance capture, you're, you're doing your work, but that's not the finished product. The finished product is going to go through editors, on camera stuff it'll be which take is going to be used that's the same with performance capture which you don't know which take they're going to use you don't know how it's going to cut together you don't know what the music's going to be like what the shot really is going to look like all that stuff so it's it's a very collaborative process performance capture and film and tv and so you you learn to just let it go you don't you don't you don't get precious about these things otherwise bad habits develop yeah, 100%. DYI says, why do you think Rockstar decided to start after the boat robbery? Pretty good. Pretty cool idea, though, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I thought I thought for the first two years that we were going to do the, the... I figured we were going to do, do the it, Blackwater it's... Massacre. I figured oh, it was yeah, prominent. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, I, maybe they've got plans down the road. I... I'm not oh, teasing would, anything at no, all. I think um, I think they do, but that's just me. Well, it seems like people people love it. <laughs> people seem to like the Red Dead franchise a little bit. So oh, uh, yeah. just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hundred uh, percent. But but it is it is quite fascinating how they uh, they're they are such great storytellers, and those writers oh. are just tremendous and. And the the fact that they could, I mean, this is like a sixty hour story, and that there's still mystery and things that are to uncover, and like, why didn't we see this, that, or the other? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's actually massive. actually crazy the amount of detail in the game. I don't think there's ever been a more detailed world. And you've played it, you know, like just I've, the yeah. random random events you come across, or the detail in the graphics and the environments, the Easter eggs. Like it's just insane. It kind of also, without, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, flex on any other title, but I mean, you do kind of have this. Yeah, I agree. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I know I, exactly what you're going to say. Well, here's the thing that I knew before the game was coming out that I knew. Because the, the, the folks at Rockstar, they love video games. <laughs> I mean, they love, they're gamers. And they love yeah. it. And they, their games are, they're trying to satisfy themselves. And they're very hard to satisfy. But they, you know, I remember even talking to Rod on the first game because I had just played 
GTA 4, right? And I was just sort of talking about the details in GTA 4 and like, oh my, and you can like sit on any chair. And he's like, right? Yeah, you can sit on any chair. It, they go through games and they knock them around to see what they can and can't do. And then they figure out, well, how do we figure out how to do that? And wow. so I now play games a little bit with that in mind as well. Like, you try to fiddle like, around. See what you can do. Well, just to sort of see, oh, I think I know how they did that. Okay, I, no, that's new. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's not, yeah. okay, you're not allowed to go there. Oh, I see, it's a hallway. It's not really a big open thing. It's okay. Like, you you get a sense of these things. Um, but I do think, I mean, I think it was the third time I played through it when I realized you could uh, stick a guy that you had tied up underneath your horse's haunches and the horse would poop on him and the guy and there was an animation for the guy getting pooped on. I mean, what the these guys are crazy. That is so crazy. Because <laughs> they had to, somebody had to think, oh maybe somebody's gonna want to do this. And then they had to hire somebody to lay him on the ground and go, oh, 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 you know, I'm getting pooped on. It's crazy. <laughs> oh man, that's unbelievable. I, I just love the I love the random events that you come across. Like I think that is so cool. Whether it's KKK or some random freak guy under the, you know, that's got someone captured under the store, or there's just so oh, yeah. many. Yeah, you would have seen some of them. Oh, I've uh, seen. I, I, I think I've, I've seen. Yeah. I think I've seen the bulk of them. Um, and 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 the 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 one thing I don't, I can't, I can never black hat Arthur. I could never black hat John either. The only guy who could black hat was Jack in the in the first game. I was a real bastard playing Jack, <laughs> uh, but I can't bring myself to make Arthur a, 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 a jerk. No, hundred um, uh, percent. Duchess descent is from Jack. Duchess descent into madness is so nuanced and scary. How did you modulate this descent without overdoing it and getting there too quickly? Good question. Jack, that's a tremendous yeah. question. Wow. That's a really excellent question. And the answer is, it was very, very hard. Um, there's a story, and, and the thing is, is we were very focused on getting that right. Um, there was, there, there were some days where I knew, um, Okay, this is a this is a, a glimpse of the crazy, and there was one day uh, where I really went for it. Um, after uh, poor Kieran uh, shows up back at Shady Bell, and Dutch realizes he's been uh, outmaneuvered again by the O'Driscolls. That's right. And uh, I I I went heavy into uh, crazy crazy town and uh, and rod pulled me aside and said uh, as only he could uh you know ben if 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 he's that crazy now he's never going to get to the second game and i was like oh yeah no that's right that's right okay so we would say pulled you back a bit yeah oh sure yeah yeah and that was and that's you know the other thing is is because yeah, I was in a, my position from an, from an acting point of view, one of the ways we, one of the ways we manage the work is through a process called script analysis and script analysis is understanding the full arc of the character that you're playing. And most of the actors on Red Dead didn't know what their arc was because they, because we didn't get the whole script at the same time, but because I knew what happened. I sort of knew what was owed. So it put me in a, in a very good position, uh, at least from the standpoint of crafting an arc, I understood and, and the animators and, and the writers understood. So I knew the questions to ask about where we were. And also sort of, we st the thing about Dutch is, it's not like he ever goes just batty. It's just his focus gets skewed so mm. problematically, and then and then to my mind that's that like 
he gets as far as the very final moment of the of the game before the credits roll and that's sort of his atonement in his mind and then he goes up to be colonel kurtz for the rest of his life and just goes up into the mountains um and his ambitions are are gone uh and i think it's because of because of his failure with uh, with arthur what a character i'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. reminiscing here at the moment. <laughs> oh it's just such a good character and it's thanks to you mate so uh, uh hi ben amazing performance me and several players have been trying to figure out the original order of missions as a hobby and obsession for two years based on the game dialogue and clues do you know it <laughs> uh, well no because yeah. uh, I, I hate to i hate to break it to you fellas but that's a bit of a fool's errand because the order of missions is entirely up to you so the order the proper order of the missions is the order in which you play them exactly uh, and again that's that's that's, that's why it, yeah. it's why it took five years was <laughs> because to give the player the autonomy to to tell the story as they would tell it um and and it, what roger had to do in order to create a character that is um viable and has a spine no matter how the player intends to to play it is that is a hell of a needle he had to thread and boy howdy did he well even the fact that rob had to do all those side missions as well even though you know most people would have played them as arthur like that level of detail is only a thing rockstar would do it's insane yes yeah they're I'm crazy only... they're crazy they're crazy <laughs> but they're amazing but crazy yeah. But also, it, it, it is a it is a factor of that you know they're doing pretty well, aren't they? In terms of um, you know GTA shark cards and GTA Online has really set them up pretty nicely, I would say. Oh, uh, I guess it. Pavins Pavins Reich says, "Undead Nightmare Two or T Tahiti DLC." <laughs> you probably get this question a lot, but I know you can't say anything, and even if you were doing something like that. Again, you couldn't say anything, but True. let's reframe the question. How cool would that be? <laughs> well, uh. Tahiti, Tahiti is one of those funny. I think I said, I think I say Tahiti maybe four times in the game, and uh, everybody goes about to Tahiti. Dutch didn't give a shit about Tahiti. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was just about keeping the gang together. It was just about having yeah. an ambition. Um, it was the goal. It was it you know it's a it's a MacGuffin even exactly. for Dutch it's MacGuffin. Like, it was never the actual it, goal. It's just to keep them in line. Yeah, we we have to have a mission. If we don't have a mission, we're going to fall apart. And once we didn't have a mission, we fell apart. Um, but as for Undead Nightmare, I didn't I didn't work on the first Undead Nightmare. That irked me. I would have liked to have seen Zombie Dutch. Yeah, so yeah. so yeah, if there was a chance to be a Zombie Dutch, I'd, I'd take it. <laughs> sure but I, but but i think you know i think and i i people will disagree i guess because people can but my instinct is is that once you're providing a 60 hour 65 hour story of the richness and detail that that they delivered on red dead 2 that you don't need any dlc <laughs> you, you know it's not and if you're going to get it i think it would be more likely that it would be something like what undead nightmare was which was something it's different. not really it's yeah. not essential to the understanding of the story so it sort of stands to one side um but again i think they got better fish to fry i i don't know what they're working on but i cannot wait to see what it is oh me, uh, me neither um blueberry says could you tell my friend Josh to finish Red Dead Two? <laughs> well, what, what 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 is wrong with Josh? Why why <laughs> won't he finish Red Dead Two? Is he chicken? <laughs> yeah, Josh, finish Red Dead Two. My 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 mother finished Red Dead Two, so I think uh, Are you everybody serious? should. Are you yeah, se yeah, you're serious. Yeah. yeah, wow. She came to she came to a Comic Con 
in Boston, which is my hometown, and came to one of those panels that you do. And she, she sort of sized up the crowd. She's like, all these people played that game? I can play that game. And she went ahead and it took her a long time. That's awesome. She, she, she played the game. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's she, inspiration. How old's your mother? She was 75 when she started. And wow. In, in case she's watching, she's 75 still. gm hi ben amazing performance me and several players have been trying to we've already done that one uh sandwich why did dutch side with micah at the end of chapter six when he was only in the gang for a year and arthur was in it for 20 love your character from sandwich um, that's a, that's a, it's a tough one, but it, it, it's, it, the, uh, I think that there were, there are two vectors going on at, at the same time. One is Dutch losing faith in Arthur, feeling that Arthur's losing faith in him. There's no and trust that, that, that diminishment is happening at the same time that Micah is um, increasing his hold on Dutch. So I don't, I don't feel like, at least in the way I played it, it's not that Dutch was taking Micah's side. It was that Micah was taking Dutch's side and Arthur wasn't. And that's, and again, that's why it's amazing to have such a rich story that it, it depends on your point of view what all of these events mean. Mm. No, that makes sense. Again, a lot of people here are saying glorious beard, amazing beard. <laughs> I wish I had a beard like that. <laughs> They're not talking about me. <laughs> um, oh, far out. Uh, Red Harlow. <clears throat> Do you think that uh, uncle is Red Harlow from Red Dead Revolver? Judging by the evidence and multiple videos about the theory. Um, you know, I played that game. Um, I, I've, I've I, never played it, Red Dead Revolver. I don't... Red, Red Harlow, to my recollection, is... Uh, in the end, Uncle's a stand-up guy, but not like Red Harlow is. I, I think that that's... Um, I don't... I do know that they peppered some stuff from red dead revolver in both red dead games mm -hmm. but i don't think that i don't i don't put any stock in that theory that, that red harlow turned into uncle no 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 who cares says which game was more enjoyable to work on the first or the second that is an impossible question i think they're yeah. both, both as good as the other as the other eh? and i wouldn't get i wouldn't have the second one without the first one and just for the record a day working as an actor is a good day. Yeah. L. Anderson, what do you think of the potential of a prequel to the prequel? But the main protagonist is Dutch and his rise to power. Hey, you're not going to say no to that. <laughs> I, I, I said it to somebody. If, if I'm 70 and I'm playing Dutch as an 11 year old, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm down with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, far. Hey, that's actually quite plausible. If they were gonna, if they were gonna do a story from here, if they were gonna do the third game, but then, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a prequel to a prequel in a in a game before ever. Has it been a prequel to a prequel? I'd have to. No. Maybe, surely it's been done, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. That's for sure. Uh, um, any any favorite. Uh, lines for you, or is there just too many? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's, I, there's, there's way too many. I, yeah, I, it's I, the same with scene. Yeah, but it was an embarrassment. I mean, the guy is, speaks well. Mm. Um, what? What about the the first game? Was there was there mocap in the first game? Like, oh yeah, all of it to the to all the, of it. To the same degree as the second, the same like the, obviously the technology's changed. In yeah, but in my one of the big changes in the tech is that um, 
now you can cut within a scene, which is a lot more like when you work on camera that, you know, you can muff a line and you don't have to throw out the whole scene. On the first game, we had to get it all right in a single take. So every one of those takes in the first game is all of us and it's a single take. And it's because of the way the tech, like here's an example. This was one of my first days on the first game and we were at a, we were at a mocap studio in Santa Monica, um, and we would have rehearsal days where we wouldn't suit up. The build team would build, you know, the set, and which is so. If you got to go through a door jam, there's a door jam that you open. If you got to sit on a chair, there's a chair that you sit on. If you got, and and then then we block the whole scene, and then we come back the next day, suit up in the mocap suit and wow. get it done but so like the this the first scene i did was um uh john marston and the 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 professor joe Ackman, um played professor uh the yale professor i'm forgetting his name right now who had a had a had a i think a heroin or a morphine addiction oh, but um yeah, yeah. but i'm yelling up at john marston who's on the second floor and he's yelling down at me and I'm down on the street. And in actuality, we are about two feet away from each other and he's shouting down at my feet and I'm shouting up at, at his head, walking <laughs> back and weird. forth. It, you know, it's a little weird, but it's also, it's not, it's not unlike, it's not unlike, you know, doing theater in a black box uh, theater. Uh, it, it, it's, it's in the wheelhouse of the act, uh, but it's, Professor but it is, Professor McDougal? McGonagall. Uh, McGonagall. McDougal. McDougal. Professor McDougal. McDougal. Yeah, McDougal. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so that all those scenes in the first one, all of them, like poor, poor uh, Steve Palmer up on top of a giant uh, scaffold for a day doing the opening at, at Fort Mercer. That That's, it's all, it's, it's, it is, it is an enduring frustration that, uh, it is considered voice acting because oh. it is here's the thing for me that is the most people are like well what else should you be called or, or people get hostile when you say don't call please don't call it voice acting but the thing is is we had to memorize these scripts we were opposite each other um and so when you consider that it's dan if you and i are doing a scene Mm. the the more important than what i'm bringing to the scene is what i'm getting from you i get i get my performance from you right yeah. that's how we that's how we perform it's off the other person and so when you call it voice acting which is a discipline um and i would never mean to denigrate it i know i know extraordinary voice actors um but the work we did on both Red Dead titles is not in any way, shape, or form voice act. It is, you can call it performance capture if you want to. If it were up to me, we'd just call it what it is, which is acting. And so when you put the voice in front of it, you don't understand that I couldn't have built the relationship I built with Sadie Adler if I didn't have Alex McKenna on the other side of the scene, I couldn't have built the relationship I had with Hosea. If I didn't have Curzon Dobell on the other side of the scene, when I watch that work, I see us, I see us together and I see the energy that's passing between us. And when you call it voice act, you're a calling it something that it is not, but B you are dismissing all of the time that I spent with all of these extraordinary actors, because you're conjuring this idea of me sitting alone in a booth with pages and pages in front of me and reading, them, which there is some of that to be sure. Yeah. You uh, did maybe, some of that, but yeah, maybe 15 days. Yeah. And then a hundred and then a hundred and however many days on a performance capture stage. So I don't know if that, if it'll ever be put to bed, but that's about as I think clearly it's changing. as I can I think, put it. I think people are starting to take notice because, you know, it is only 
mocap's only been going in games for 13 years 12 or 13 years yeah i think that's i mean the the tech that we used on the first red dead was brand new it was yeah i was gonna say that was that was probably the start pretty much yeah around that and uncharted i think did it as well well um, no well claudia black is a friend of mine and claudia oh, really? she's aussie yeah Oh yeah, she's awesome. Uh, she is, a, and a hell of an actor. And she played, oh. she played. Uh, she ended Chloe. up. She, she, oh yeah, Chloe. Chloe and Uncharted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead sexy too. But she, <laughs> uh, she, um, yeah. I would tease her that 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 because what they were using at that point was they were ju just doing motion capture, but then they were filming very closely on the actors, and so the animators were using, as I understand it, it's not. I didn't work on. I haven't worked for Naughty Dog. I admire them tremendously. Um, but I, my understanding is they have now moved on and now they have their version of, of ah, facial capture. Okay. And I think everybody everybody does now at this point. I think the majors are all using full performance capture just because it's... it's. Uh, oh, so even they weren't using Uncharted 1. It was a little bit different. Yeah. The, well, they the, the actors they the actors were playing themselves, right? So it, again, it's my understanding. I wasn't, but my understanding is Nolan North is on a set. He's got a soft cap on and a microphone and he's performing Nathan Drake. But then I think they're using a visual reference on the early ones to inform the animation of the character. Okay. My, I think by the third, if I'm not mistaken, they, they added that facial sounds right. capture. That sounds right. I think Yeah, I think some people just get a little bit confused about Red Dead. Like, I know how much mocap you did for two. Like, I knew that. But for one, I didn't know it was that much, personally. It's, so that's, it's all, that's my mistake, yeah. It's I didn't... The, I did... And I played two characters on, on, on the first one. And I did... All of my work was performance capture, except yeah. for one two-hour session in the That's like the amazing. stuff where the stuff where where Dutch is on the the Gatling gun, I didn't do, and that was voice act that voice acting right, and then the stuff running up the to the top of the cave that was also done in the booth remotely, but every other thing you see is a scene. It's a scene, just like out of the play. So if Rogers, I, if Rogers number one in performance, you must be close second then, surely in, in racked up hours. Well, not at this point, <laughs> I, I don't think it's I, I, I don't think it's a it's a competition. No, no. I, and, I, and I expect if we if we expand to you know uh, a dear friend of mine um, is Ahmed Best who played Jar Jar Binks on uh, in Star Wars. Oh and wow! He, he and his work with John Knoll is really the birth of what we're, what we all are doing. Um, yeah. and people don't understand that, that, that Jar Jar was a performance. They think it's just a, a, a character, a cartoon, I guess. But then Andy Serkis in his work in Gollum, I think that for whatever reason, I think that was when Took Peter notice. Jackson. Well, I think, I think the, I think that, I think, Studios, for whatever reason, don't really want the how we did it to be forefront in the audience's mind. I think that that so I think they kind of hide it to one side. Yeah. Um, but uh, but Danny Circus and what he did, and and so if anybody really wants to know what it looks like, if you watch it behind the scenes of uh, any one of those Planet of the Ape uh, movies, that's essentially what we are doing it's that um it's just we're not being incorporated in the live action realm as as that was hap as, as yeah. that was going on um and certainly I love andy circus he's he's a legend that guy <laughs> beyond a let and you think about the, the stuff he doesn't get credit for like his king oh, kong his king kong I is know. just heart-wrenching uh mm. and 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 then on top of it the guy can he can he can do it on camera too. I mean, he is he's he's even he's, in one of my favorite movies called The Prestige. He's even oh, pops sure. up in that. He's just he's just in everything. Well, and uh, that's but it's also that's a gigging actor. He's been gigging for yeah. forever, and and he he stepped in a really good puddle. And boy, howdy, he has made great use of it. And now I he's think he's directing, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, he. I think he created an entire business of uh, of, of 
as a consultant on, on he he is absolutely at the vanguard of the technology and has been oh, yeah. not just at the vanguard of it but he has been uh, given back to artists through creating opportunities and educating and and i think um, andy circus is a, is a real credit to 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 the craft oh 100 percent. david says red dead three should be about dutch <laughs> Uh, I'll take it. David, write a letter, man. <laughs> GM, do you think there's an undertone of the story which is a critique of extreme capitalism and extreme communism and John being the only one to find the balance in between? Arthur's last words, John made it. It's a very complex question. GM? I think that that's there to find if you want to find it. I don't think that I do. I, I think that you can. First of all, I think any any art. There's how. That's a that's um, a nice car. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a car, but it might be. <laughs> um, the uh, there is there is um, any art that concerns itself with um, larger issues as the red dead series does it ta it's, it's talking about government it's talking about industry it's talking about um station it's exploring themes of uh representation of race of ownership of of um the difference of communities um income disparity it's dealing with a great many things so if you wanted to go in and find something that, that's speaking to capitalism v communism, I think that, that that's there to find. If you want to go in there and see if it's an exploration of toxic masculinity, uh, I think that that's there to find. I think that I think that what is great about it is um, uh, is that it's asking a lot of questions. And I don't think that it's it's making a lot of declaratives. I don't think it's saying this is right, this is wrong. I think it's more saying what is the nature of power? What is the nature of uh, are these? Is this a gang of of fools, or is this a gang of people that are trying to do something, um, or is it both? And what are the outcomes? Because there are some happy endings in this story, and then there's some very sad endings in this story, and. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's great value to a story that invests in much as much in um, what would be considered a minor character. Um, you know, there, Rockstar took great care to hire actors that could hold their own um, for all of these roles. You know, Harron Atkins oh, yeah. is, is indelible in his work. And that, that story is a big part of the emotional um, power of, of the entire story um it was just a, it just a and again it was just an incredible ensemble that i got to work with i just the, lucky, castings, lucky. the casting's unreal perfect couldn't have done any better jackie seeks kindest regards from the cameo gang <laughs> i know jackie hi jackie vic h uh what would dutch have said when arthur said he gave him all he had and Dutch replies. Uh, I don't know what Dutch, he replies. Dutch, cut uh, off, but yeah. Um, Dutch uh, did he Dutch Oh he says was, I I and that was it. Yeah 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 of course. Yeah. And Dutch asked, Dutch, asked, yeah. Dutch answered as he could. He walked away from both of those men. Um there was nothing people are like why did why did Arthur leave Dutch and uh or rather, why did Dutch leave Arthur there to die? It's because Arthur was, spoiler alert, Arthur was already dead. What's Dutch going to do? I mean, yeah, I what's Dutch going to do? Yeah, He's going to sit there and hold his hand and say, I'm sorry, I, I screwed everything up. Jeez, I, you were right, Michael was a rat. I mean, what, what's he going to do? There's nothing to be done. And I don't think Dutch feels that he's got the right to, some fan did uh, an amazing image of Dutch kneeling at Arthur's uh, stone, uh, spoilers, uh, that I loved, but I, I, I can't imagine that Dutch would have done it. I think he tried to 
he he always kept moving forward. He didn't like to dwell. Um, yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't. I think. I think. I don't think. He, I think we we saw what happened. He walked away, and that's what he would have done. That's what he did. It's also one of those things where you you want a little bit of mystery, don't you? You know, you don't want to you don't want to reveal all the secrets. Oh no, I yeah. would never. There's, there's, I got trust me, I got a lot of mystery. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's but it, but uh, kind of where we began. This is what's great are these questions. These the answers are less important than the questions. Yeah, no, we've got some great questions. Another one here. Parvisal, best moments in Red Dead 2 was when Arthur, Dutch, and Jose go fishing and you get the chance to see their backstory. Yeah, yeah. that was a great part. I, I love, love that, that one. Stuff. Then the story about how uh, Arthur pretended to get fish, but he just bought them. <laughs> That's right. It was, that was a very fun day. That was one of those days that you just sort of knew this is a special this day. This is special, yeah. 100 percent it was actually asking as well how you captured the fishing animations because you obviously can't have a rod you're just pretending do you remember no we had a rod you had a rod of course oh my god there you go guys just understand if you see me picking up a cup i'm picking up a cup if you see me pulling out my gun why i say that why i say that is because you know the horse stuff i think roger said you were on barrels for that that's why I thought oh, I don't know if we're I don't know if we're allowed to say what we were on, but we were in saddles for sure. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think on a, yeah. But we were on we were on horses. The animators take it from there. We're not, you know. Yeah. But but there's times when, you know, like you're pulling on a horse and you've got you got another actor that is helping you, you know, pull on the on the horse. Um it's we if there's a door there's a door if there's a ladder there's a ladder if if there's a, a cliff there's a cliff if there's if we're climbing on a boat we're climbing on a boat we go out into the into the green room and these geniuses would put together these epic sets that we would then come on and be like what the hell Can okay that's imagine? a gallow and that's a roof and that's cheese this is crazy oh I can only imagine uh who cares ben uh what was dutch's reason leaving john to die we just answered that why did he shoot mckay at the end of the game oh micah micah mckay don't know how i keep saying that for some reason micah at um, the end of the game because uh it's up to you uh but because uh micah was a rat Dutch kills Micah and Dutch leaves uh, John the money. So draw your own conclusions. There are some people that believe that the Dutch was there with Micah, but they've been together for the intervening years. And I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I believe that when Dutch says that he's here for the same reason that John is, that's why Dutch is there. Bushy love the fact, um, Love your work, Dan, and hello, Brian. Thank you. Uh, Alex, next Red Dead is co-op, playing as Davy and Jenny. <laughs> That'd be an interesting experience. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, personally, do you have any, do, do you want to do more video game work? Because I know you've done these, obviously, amazing games. You've done L.A. Noir. Um, are, you, are you looking at doing more games? I'm, uh, I, uh, relish every opportunity I get to work, um, whenever I get to it, it, it's a, uh, it was a unique thing on, on Red Dead took so long that I managed to do two movies in the, while I was playing Dutch, um, Ant-Man? in that Ant-Man was one of them. Yeah. And, and then the other one where we started with the, uh, uh, Greg, uh, McLean directed yeah, uh, James Gunn script was the Belco experiment. But so Two both of those, movies. nice. Well, <laughs> so just so you understand the scope of the game shot, Belco came back and worked on red dead. That movie came out. 
the whole gang came with me to go see it in Times Square. We watched that Fuck come out. Man. We were still behind the NDA. Then I booked Ant-Man and the Wasp. That was a five month. You know, I wasn't there for five months, but I was going from Atlanta to New York to San Francisco doing all of those. And then that came out and uh, <laughs> still hadn't uh, Red Dead. I still couldn't talk about. Um, Unbelievable, but, isn't it? But the, the, the whole goal Dan is just to be busy. So I don't, I'm not picky. If, if there's a role for me to do um, behind a microphone on a performance capture stage in front of a camera, I, I'm, so uh, you're, I'm just, you're, you're looking for anything, whether it's TV, movies, games, you're not, you're not choosy. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> so I've done, I've done just about everything there is. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I've You've ticked I don't all the think boxes. That, I don't think there's a form I have I have not explored. <laughs> You've um, done theater. I'm, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I did. I I got my degree in, in uh, acting in, in the mid '90s and spent uh, five years, six years in in the off off Broadway and off Broadway theater scene in uh, in New York. And uh, do you think it helps came to, a lot? Like when you when you when you're doing stuff in front of a camera, do you think that theater experience helps? Because Roger Roger does it as well. I know he's he's done a lot of theater. I think I think it I think everything informs everything. Um, mm. I think that there there are things about the camera that are different than the proscenium, if you would, of, of, a, of a theater piece. The one thing that sort of combines them perfectly is performance capture, because there your body is kind of on stage and is large, um, but your face is constantly in close up. So you, you, you can be still and it reads. And there's a lot of stillness in the work that we did in uh, Red Dead, which is that's more of a uh, more closely associated with uh, on camera. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you want to have as an actor the, as big a toolbox as you can uh, carry. And there are um, things that are quite similar between all the disciplines, um, things like script analysis, the, the, the nature of the story, the principles of connecting with another person. Th these things agree across platforms but then there's you, you're not you're, you're worried about eye lines when you're working on camera you're not worried about eye lines when you're working in the theater or or in performance capture all that much so there are things that are different but theater you, get, you can't you can't really stuff up can you you've got to just ride with it do you know what i mean that's that's something well yeah just, you know but that's but you know at the end of the day that's a great take in front of a camera too when when things start yeah just almost go wrong, like almost fall <laughs> apart, but you manage to keep it together. That that can happen in front of a camera, and it usually makes for a great moment in front of a camera and a great moment on stage. But on stage, yeah, you don't get a uh, you don't get a second crack. You don't get to ask the audience, you know, can we go back to one? I'd like to take that again. <laughs> you can't you can't do that on stage. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh, recently watched your short movie, Black Eyed Sue. Are there uh, any other examples of your work that involve characters in a similar vein to Dutch? That's from GM. I haven't seen that. I'm, I'm going to have to check that out after this. It's, uh, it's, I, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Peter Alton, Joe Freer, Ben Simone. Um, oh, no. This was, no. I think, 2004. Oh. 2005. Okay. We just missed doing it in HD. Like I think it's in 720p. We were just just uh, about a month uh, behind the times, and it, it's a shame because Keith Bruchello is the DP on that. It's it you know it's a short film. It's hard to uh, short film's hard to do, um, but it is that the guy that I played. That's I I give uh, that film is why I had sort of those sounds that Dutch uses come from that guy from Black Eyed Sue, um, Osborne Crawl. And that, so that was, uh, 
kind of bit of inspiration. But, well, it was again, it was like that was a tool that I put mm -hmm. in my toolbox and then I had it with me two years later, three years later when I had the audition for, for Dutch. Yeah. Um, but I, I love that people are finding it. I, I that's yeah. great. That's when you know they're fans of your work when they're going back yeah, to your, no, that is, that is your not, IMDb that, and going through, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, that that's 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 that means a lot to me. And, and Joe Free is a great actor who should be uh, seen. So I think that's great on on lots of counts. Uh, what's what's your favorite? Go sorry, go ahead, man. No, go ahead. I was going to say, what's what's your favorite when you when you look through that list of work that you've done besides Red Dead? What do you have a favorite? Do you have I know you don't like playing favorites with things, but is there a, a memorable experience? Like, Look, they're I, all... I, it's all... I mean, I ran off to join the circus, Dan, and I... Th there was... There's been work for me for 20 years, so I feel yeah. pretty good about it. Yeah. Um, I will say there are ones... Look, I got to drive an SUV at high speeds down the streets of San Francisco chasing giant man. Um, that was pretty cool. That was, that was oh, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, and the, yeah. you know, the 12 year old comic collector in me, uh, that, 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 that I am a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of, of the MCU is, uh, that's, yeah, that's that, amazing. That, that is, that I, was awesome. That, that has to be up there. Uh, Bane says, I love you Dutch. That's it. I love you. Thank you. Love There's you too. A lot of those coming through that I haven't even. Uh, Guy says, "Love your work as Dutch in both games." What was your favorite moment in the game, and why do you think Dutch didn't kill Micah? I think we touched on both those, didn't we? Yeah. But um, that's from Guy Blake. During the game, we lost a lot of amazing ga gang members, um, and I wanted to ask if all of them were still alive. Who would have? sided with arthur and john and who would have sided with dutch in your opinion from blake blake that's <laughs> an interesting it's an interesting question yeah but but i think if 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 either hosea or lenny had survived um the the gang wouldn't have fallen apart i'd agree with that hosea was the glue and if you pay close attention um to uh, the interaction between Dutch and Lenny and Hosea and Lenny. It's very clear that, to my mind anyway, and I wonder, you'd have to, you'd have to ask Karen uh, Atkins his opinion, but, but to my mind, Lenny, you know, was going to be the next consigliere. Once Hosea was going to step down and Lenny was going to take over as the trusted voice in Dutch's ear. And so that mission cost dutch his uh, his counsel both take, losing both of them i'll take a few more questions because i know you're gonna run mate um yeah. i really do appreciate but it's time. been a, it's, it's a lot of fun being here man so I, thank you for for I, having i really me. appreciate your time Bush and i am still i'm still kind of quarantined so <laughs> you know it's a, it, we're not quite up to australia standards yet um, <laughs> but but the vaccine is rolling out so yeah we're getting, hopefully we're getting there eh um, I'd love to see you down at an Oz Comic Con as well. Have a beer. Uh, right? As soon as I can, I'd love to. Uh, Bushy, just wanted to say uh, to Brian, Dutch is the perfect gangster cowboy in any game ever. Great job, mate. From Bushy. Ding dong. Who's, who's Brian? Brian? Yeah. <laughs> Byron, sorry. Byron. That's a very important name, son. <laughs> That's my grandfather's name. That's my uncle's name. Oh, Byron. Man. I don't have my glasses on. Ding dong. Please say, uh, <laughs> please say one more time to Haiti. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, one more time to Haiti. How, how many times have you been asked to say the Tahiti uh, I, last I, job? I, I, I sidestepped that pretty quickly. Oh. I, I, try, I try to get, I, I know that people enjoy it, but it's a little goofy to me. <laughs> I mean, it's in the game. You can go find it on YouTube. And again, there's a thing, you know, you learn as you spend time um, uh, developing your craft 
that, as we were saying earlier, we sit and we obsess over like a performance like Robert Duvall, maybe in The Godfather, uh, when he's reporting. <laughs> Uh, but when he's reporting the death of Sonny to the Don and, uh, you know, he shot Sonny on the causeway or however the line is like people can memorize it and they can repeat it and they sort of fetishize it. They're like, oh, my God, what Robert Duvall did with that line. It was so yeah. and we start to like unpack it and think he knew just to hit the cadence like this, that and the other. It was take four, man. That was take four. <laughs> right. So no, I know what it, you mean. it's it's yeah. not. It, it wasn't precious to him on the day, but it's precious to, to us because we, and I sort of feel that that happens with our stuff. Like, like the right way to say, I have a, a goddamn plan. Like we said on that day, when we're getting ready for the, for the final train mission. And I remember that day very well too. That's how that came out. That's, yep. it's not like, boy, we really, pick the right way to say something it's not how you say it. it's why why are you saying it and so when you ask me just to say it well why am i saying it? that's the only way i can get to how yeah 100 percent. i a couple more sorry mate i, I want to ask you as well because i know you're a gamer what are you playing at the moment and have you snagged a ps5 xbox uh, series x or your pc give us the lowdown okay I have I have a, a PS4. I have not bothered trying to get a PS5. I know Roger just scored one. I have a Switch. Oh, nice! That I got at the beginning of the pandemic, and I played Zelda, and what a magnificent game that is! And okay. then I played, loved it, loved it. Um, so many, in so many ways, it's similar to Red Dead. You know, in very in many ways, it's very different, but just the scope of that world. And, oh. um, but uh, then I played the, the Super Mario uh, one, which is fun. It's a little kitty for me, but it's fun. And then, but here's the thing I've been doing for 30 days now is the Ring Fit Adventure on, oh, on really? Wii. Yeah. And it wow. it's, works. I'm enjoying it. Um, no way. Yeah. That's hilarious. And it actually well, works. Listen, it, it's better than sitting on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can't argue with that. Far out. Uh, uh, no, there you go. Beautiful. So, Dutch is a uh, Ben is a Switch player. I wouldn't have thought that. Sure. There you go. Oh, and the other one, I, the other I also played, and it, the timing was challenging because it's so, but it's so remarkable. Last of Us Two. You played uh, it. I played. I played it twice, nice. in a row. And I, wow. I, I, well, again, I wanted. I played it through once to to experience it, and then I wanted to play it through a second time to sort of see what they were doing, like to sort of bang at the corners of it and understand what the nature of the achievement, which is a profound achievement. Mm -hmm. But those, I was. I will tell you, I was very, very jealous of how. Um, uh, oh. good the uh, facial capture on that was I'd they, love to see you pop up in a Naughty Dog project oh. those those actors those performances those are really brave really bold um, oh. and uh, you know to, to, to have the stones to uh, take a property and uh, take it in a direction that is not going to be for everybody and risk the the an audience uh, pushback um that's it's what artists do and that you know i i applaud uh, that studio and that and that game is quite an achievement i know they're different scopes but when i when i think of games with amazing detail i think of red dead 2 and i think of last of us part 2 as like at the top you know well you know with uh, the first when, when we finished red dead 1 i was like we that's the greatest video game ever made and i believed that entirely and then i played last of us and i was like <laughs> oh, no. yeah. but that's good you got to keep pushing the boundaries eh? they have got to keep pushing yeah. the boundaries no that's awesome man well it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show man i really appreciate man, your time thanks for having me uh, uh, congrats on you know the 
this growing enterprise of yours and and uh, um, I wish you great success and I really appreciate uh, having this time to spend with you. Thank you so much, man. Before I let you go, is there, can Dutch say anything to Dan quickly? Oh, anything. Yeah, else? okay. Uh, yeah, Dan, you should have been listening closely to... Uh, <clears throat> where is he? It's hard to find him. Just remember Benjamin Byron, Brian. Yeah. Always doubt. Always doubt. Yeah, you see, when it's academic, I can't... It's not quite there. But you know, you got me. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite there. I need. Oh, I, need... I don't think it's. I think it's there. I oh, think you're being well, a little bit harsh. I think you're being. You're far little... too kind. I appreciate <laughs> that very much. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, patience, and uh, all the best to you. Just don't cross me. <laughs> thank you, man. No, I do really appreciate. It. I hope you have a great day. Hey, thanks, Dan. All my very best, man. Thank you, man. Take care. All right. There you have it, guys. Benjamin Byron Davis. Or as I like to call him, Benjamin Bryan. <laughs> uh, what a great guy, hey? What a fantastic guy. Guys, if you could do me a favor, I'd love to get Rob aka john marston on the show hit the link i'm putting in the chat right now and let him know that you want to see him on the show guys it'd be an absolute honor to talk to him about all things red dead we've had roger we've had ben now who else do we want from this amazing franchise you guys let me know down below what a great chat what a great man great performer and uh great chat did you guys enjoy it? Did you have fun? Get some American Venom on, eh? Bushy, that guy's amazing. You talking to me? About me? Or are you talking about... Uh, ben, no, thank you, Bushy. I really appreciate the super chat, man. Really, really appreciate the super chats that everyone sent. Uh, really helps... Um, helps me out. You know, this is my full-time gig, guys. So, And uh, we've got some great guests coming up, guys. We've got Jin Sakai from Ghosts of Tsushima on tomorrow. That'll be a great chat. And, uh, and we've also got Pan Am from Cyberpunk in a couple of days' time as well. So it's all happening. Yavir. Yavir. Amazing chat. Hope you can bring more people. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Micah, Jose, yeah, Sadie, Sadie, Lenny, yeah, I'll do my best guys, I'll do my best, I'll keep bringing you guys the heroes and you keep helping me out, Bushy, thank you man, appreciate it brother, appreciate it so much, Oh, so my super chat was ignored. What was your super chat, man? I, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I'm so sorry. What did you ask? Just send me a Twitter DM what you what you asked, and I'll um I'll get the answer for you. From Ben. Awfully Irish podcast. That was unreal. Can't wait to chat later. Yeah, I'm going to be on the Awfully Irish podcast in a couple of hours, guys, if you want to swing by. I'll be the one being interviewed for once, eh? God, I love this music, eh? Is it too loud? Down. Yeah, guys, so once again, I'd love to get Rob on, right? And we've got 21 likes now. That's beautiful, but we need a few more. We've got to get his attention. His attention. Click this link if you're on Twitter and give it a like. Say you'd love to see it because that's going to really help us out. <clears throat> Getting uh, John Marston on the show. How good would that be? Yeah, I got Pan Am, Gad. Pan Am. It's happening. Pan Am from Cyberpunk. 
and Jin Sakai. How good's that? A couple of big hitting games from last year. He's such a good man. I'm playing John right now. Nice. Unshaken, I would put on big time, but I'd get copyright striked. So I can't, uh, I can't do that, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, you guys still playing Red Dead? Nico Bellic would be a good one, 100%. Ivor the Boneless from Valhalla. I had a much quieter mic from... from Ben, did I? Yeah, I've been having a couple of audio issues, so just bear with me, guys, as I work through them. Interview CJ and Franklin from GTA 5. Well, stay tuned, guys. I'm working on it. The big three from GTA. How good would that be? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Leave it with me. Are you going to play Red Dead after the show? Nice. I might have to as well. I might have to play it again. Now, guys, I really appreciate it. If you want to, if you want to go above and beyond, you can become a member of the Onion Gang. I call it. You can become an Onion Lover, Onion Master, Onion uh, King, Onion. <laughs> don't I, if you don't know what it means, it's it's from um, Call of Duty, the Onion line in Call of Duty. Look it up. But it sort of became a meme. Meme. Bushy, glad to found your channel when I did. Red Dead is amazing, but Ghost Guy will be great. It's a mind blowing game. But Ghost Guy will be great. It's a mind-blowing game. Thank you, man. I appreciate that a lot. I really, really appreciate it, Bushy. Pat, great interview, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We got, we got some really good information out of him. Some great questions. You guys provided amazing questions to, to Ben. So I can't thank you enough for that. I mean, I've got my list prepared, but you guys blew it out of the water with some of the interview, uh, some of the um, questions that you that we got for him. So let me, if you guys are new here, or if you haven't seen all my uh, all my interviews, we just had Mail V on from Cyberpunk. We've got, as I said, Jin Sakai, Ghost of Tsushima, the, the main lead who you play as. Pan Am from Cyberpunk. Hold on. What what's the next song? We need another Red Dead song. Ooh, here's a good one. The first shall be the last. Um We've also had Greg Greg Brick, who played the father in Far Cry. We had him on. We had Jason Hightower from Cyberpunk. He played Jackie. We've had Roger Clark. We've had all the guys from Black Ops Cold War. You know, Adler. We've had Barry Sloan, who played Captain Price, Modern Warfare. We've had Troy Baker. We've had Troy Baker on the show, guys. He's, he's considered one of the greatest voice actors there is. You know, if you don't know who Troy Baker is, look him up. Bushy again, man. You you are a, f a fucking legend. I love you. Ghost of Tsushima. I think I spelled that right. Bushy. Love you, brother. Nico Bellic, please. So little interviews with him. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I was actually able to get Gavin Dre, who was Male V, yesterday. That was his first YouTube interview. We got the exclusive. Can I get the Nico Bellic? It's been like 12 years. So I'll try. <laughs> I think it's been 12 years since GTA 4 came out. So I'll do my best. Puts that's the way it is? Okay, hold on. Oh, what about this one? Nah, we got to do that's the way it is. You're right. Great song. Ooh. 
getting teary eyed, please. And Bushy has become an onion lover. Thank you, Bushy. Bushy is an onion lover. I told you, you got to become a member of the onion lover. <laughs> Love you, man. Become a member, become an onion lover. Nico Bellic would be cool. Who plays Nico Bellic, guys? Nico Bellic is played by Michael Hollick. What else was he in? My goal, guys, is to get every big name voice actor in gaming or actor, mocap act, what, actor, video game actors, everyone there is. That's the goal. They call me the Joe Rogan of video games. Oh, he was in Dying Light. He was in a few things. Hey, I think I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Nico Belli. Yeah, Michael Hollick. Micah, yeah. Who plays Micah? If if we can't get um, Rob on, who do we want next? Abigail. Um, who else from Red Dead? Micah. Geralt from Rivia would be a call. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. I agree. Geralt. Geralt. Witcher 3. Get someone from Assassin's Creed. I've already had a Eivor on, brother. I've already had Eivor. Peter Bloomquist. Who's Peter Bloomquist? You gotta bear with me here, guys. I'm... There's so many names. Oh, he, he plays Micah, of course. All right. I'll hit him up. I'll hit him up. One of the coolest songs, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Ma Max, hello to you too. Dan, message Rob on Instagram. He doesn't use Twitter. Okay. I'll message him on... Um, I'll message him on... Instagram. Again, guys. Please, you guys send him an Instagram as well. Say, I'd love you to see you on Dan Allen Gaming. That'd be awesome. Bushy, Siri from The Witcher 3. Yeah. 100%. She'd be awesome. There's so many. The, the, the potential's endless. Do you know who I want to get? I don't know if you guys saw Res Resident Evil 3. It's Resident Evil 3. Resident Evil Village. So the new Resident Evil that comes out. How about we get this woman on? You ready? Hold on. Here's someone I want to get on next month or in the f next few months. Hold on. One second. This woman right here. <laughs> we need to get her on. What do you reckon? Lady Dimitriscu, they call her, I think. We need to get her on the show. I don't know who plays the character. We just don't know. So, yeah, but we want to get John Marston, of course. Kevin Conroy, I have reached out to Kevin. Didn't get a response. Um... <clears throat> Kevin Conroy, oh. If I had an interview with Kevin Conroy, I'd be like, hey, Kevin. <laughs> I'd probably be pretty nervous for that one because he is, he is Batman. You know, he is Batman, in my opinion. I sent a message to Rob. Thank you, man. Please, guys, send a message to Rob on Instagram. Let him know. If you've got an IG, guys, and you're not following me, 
follow me and once you've done that head over to Rob's IG here and send him a message let's get him on let's get him on the show I'd love to chat with him Can I say any word in Spanish? Give me something to say and I'll try. Rick from The Walking Dead. Okay, let's 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 peel it back a little bit. Let's peel it back a little bit. Um let's stick to video games for now. Shrek. <laughs> Michael Jackson, okay. Now now you're not peeling it back. Come on. Reaper, I've, I've had Troy Baker on the show. He was awesome. Uh, Nolan North, I haven't. Oh, he'd be awesome to have. Because Uncharted is one of my favorite games of all time. Cassandra from AC would be cool. Commander Shepard, I'd love to get um, Jennifer Hale on for the release of uh, Mass Effect. That'd be awesome. There's so many, so many contenders. If I'm going to do Resident Evil, yeah. Get the whole cast on. So it's just... Yeah. I, the whole idea of it, guys, was, you know, March, you know, March, February, there haven't been many games. So I thought, you know, keep myself busy. Let's talk to some of these amazing actors. And here we are, 20 later. We've had some amazing guests, and it's only going to continue from here. Roger Craig Smith would be amazing. Let's house building thing. House building thing? Sure thing. House building theme from Red Dead 2. <laughs> the first that comes up is house building theme, 10 hour loop. <laughs> oh, this is real country. Howdy, Mr. Bonham. Ashley Johnson would be cool. Jill Valentine, yep. Hundred percent. Remember to stay hydrated. Water is good for you. Cheers. Elon Musk. Okay guys, settle down. Settle down. <laughs> Get Elon Musk to talk video games in space. Alright, let, let me just call him up, hey? Oh, far out. Turn the volume up on the song. How's that? Is that better? Well, let me have a rule and a saw and a board and I'll cut it. I'll climb up a ladder with a hammer and a nail and I'll nail it. Well, we Brian Deschard, I'd love to get Brian Deschard on from Detroit. Absolutely love to. I have reached out to him. I haven't got a response yet. But I'd love to get him on. That'd be awesome. Stephen, oh yeah, Stephen Og from GTA. I'm trying to get the big three on. Overwatch actors, yep. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Let's see what else. Now, I want to know, guys, what are you guys playing at the moment? What are you guys playing? Because February, March has been such a dry year. Dry year. Dry months for games. Not much has come out at all. What are you playing at the moment? Let me know. I'd love to know. The guy from Prototype that plays Alex Mercer. Oh yeah, Prototype. Bit of an underrated game, wasn't it, Bushy? Um, who, who played Alex Mercer? Oh, did, let me just quickly find that out. Alex Mercer, what a classic name that is. Barry Pepper. Oh, he's a famous actor. Yeah. What are you playing? You're playing COD Zombies, Team Fortress 2, Red Dead 2, Red Dead, Hitman 3, Warzone. I'm seeing a lot of GTA, Red Dead, and Warzone. DayZ and Halo Ninja. Yeah. Red Dead 2. 
Fortnite 3, as in the new season's out. I don't play Fortnite. Red Dead 2, Uncharted 5, you're playing. Wow, didn't know that was out. Or do you mean Lost Legacy? War Thunder, yeah. Assassin's Creed. Has bad acting, in my opinion, unmarked. Which one? I just started AC Odyssey. I'm loving it. Such a pr pretty game. Yeah, Zoltan, if I've said your name right. That's a cool game. David Bateson would be an amazing interview. Well, guess what? I've already had him. If you're a Hitman fan, guys, check it out. David Bateson, he's a... He might have been my favorite interview. He, he was so awesome to talk to. David Bateson. Um, yeah, I had him on for about an hour and a half. You can check that out on my channel. Team Fortress 2. Is that still going? Apex Legends, Prince of Persia. It seems like there's a lot of Red Dead 2, a lot of Warzone, a lot of GTA, and a lot of Fortnite, which is the big four I would expect. What are you looking forward to? That's another question. What are you looking forward to, guys? You've got Resident Evil Village, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War, The Next Call of Duty. What What are you looking forward to? Let me know. Fuck, I love this song. What a great song. Get Yuri Lonthal. You have butchered it, who cares? But I know who you were talking about, and I'd love to have him on. Voices Spider-Man and many other games. Have you played DBD? Dead by Daylight? Is that what you're talking about? Anime? I haven't played it, no. Is it good? Been playing Destiny 2, Elite Dangerous, and a few Assassin's Creed games. Nice. How's Destiny 2 these days, man? Have they fixed... You know, has it gotten better? You playing Ghost of Tsushima? Dane? Well, you better check out my interview with Jin tomorrow. And that's happening... The next live stream, guys, that's happening with Jin tomorrow at... 8pm uh, 8, 8 PST. 8pm. So a late one, if you're up for it. You're looking forward to Resident Evil Village. Gotham Knights, yeah. Gotham Knights, I'm definitely going to be be playing that and covering that. Far Cry 6, yes. Far Cry 6, can't wait to cover that game. Can't wait to cover that game. That's going to be awesome. You know who the villain is in that. Oh, can't wait. We need a Red Dead 3, Muhammad. I know. Wouldn't that be cool? Dead Island 3? Did they even do 2? Ryan, Apex Predator, Hitman 3, my favorite mission. I actually like the second mission, man. The second mission. I love the second mission. This song is so inspiring. It's an awesome song, isn't it? Gets you pumped up. Red Dead, fuck, has some good music, man. Has some good music. You can't deny that. Jose would be cool, yeah. Interview Brian Deshire, I'd love to, love to. Guys, if you want to see someone on, hit me up and I'll make a note of it. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram and then hit them up as well. Because the more people that ask them, it helps. You know, that helped with the Roger interview, getting Roger Clark on. People wanted it, we got it. Same with Dutch, same with Ben today. I want more stuff on the next Fable, yeah. Bushy, my number one game looking forward to right now is Stalker Reboot for PC and Xbox. Dude, I agree, man. Who would have thought they'd reboot that game? Only seen a CG trailer, though, so far, so I'm a little bit cautious. A little bit cautious and just waiting to see what it looks like. Get the villain from Far Cry 6. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. We need Sekiro too. Oh, you know what we need, Dane? We need Elden Ring. We need Elden Ring. I'm on chapter three of Red Dead. Well, you got a long way to go from memory. Red Dead 2 is the best game ever made. Mad Vlad. It's up there. It's up there for me. It really is. You can't deny the detail. 
the amazing storytelling, the Easter eggs. You know, I did an Easter egg series. I don't know how if how many of you have seen it. I did it. I did like a video for each Easter egg I found, and I did about seventy videos. <laughs> did about seventy videos. Mick Gordon, yeah, the music from Doom, 100%. No, I haven't interviewed Steve Bloom before, that'd be awesome. No, I haven't had Rob on. Alright guys, if you want to join me and ask more questions, I'll be over on the Irish podcast. The Awfully Irish podcast. I'm going to leave a link uh, here if you want to come and check it out. And I'll be answering all your questions. Please head over and uh, and that's going to start in an hour's time. So if you're around in an hour, guys, click that link, set a reminder, and you can come and uh, hang out. Up to you, you don't have to. But it's always there if you want to ask me more questions, get to know me a bit better. Um, and yeah, guys, so chat over there. I'll be back in an hour to, to chat all things, but otherwise, if you... Uh, please subscribe to the channel, become a member of the Onion Army, as, as did Who Cares, as did our boy Bushy today. Absolute legend. Appreciate your support, man. And, and everyone that supported, I, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the interview. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. And if, if you guys are coming in late now, I already have done the interview with Ben. So it's about to go up as a VOD. So you can check out that whole interview. Um, but yeah, guys. Again, hit that link. I'll be back in an hour. But... Take care, guys.